Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Kill Dyken. So you guys know I've been doing a lot of videos lately on Raspberry Pi, single board computers and whatnot. And so we really figured out uh, what makes emulation tick really well on single board computers. I uh, was pointed to this one earlier today. If you guys aren't familiar with who Pi Maniac is, he's a reseller in Australia. And this one definitely decimates all. In fact, not just, I know it's not as powerful as uh, some of the other single board computers I've been putting out there, but this is the Red X uh, X2L. It uses the J4125 quad core CPU. Uh, in fact, uh, a couple of years ago, this particular uh, chipset inside of a mini PC would sell for about $162. And this just became available and they've been selling really fast in terms of hotcakes. It has an Intel UHD graphics, 600, 250 uh, megahertz in base, 750 megahertz in burst, OpenGL 4.4 DirectX 12, uh, comes in different variants between two, four, eight uh, gigabytes of RAM. And so it also believe it comes included with Windows 10. Now what makes this single board computer really stand out is because I know initially I saw prices for $32. And so you could get this single board computer right now anywhere between 32 and $39 for this single board computer. Now, if you guys are wondering just how well would this run? Well, as far as an emulation standpoint, this will decimate a Raspberry Pi 3, 3B plus, and a Raspberry Pi 4. Keep in mind, this is a Intel based chip. We know that a lot of the emulators and programs are not fully compatible. Most of them will run on ARM, but they are not fully optimized. And so on a scale level, a single board computer, which is much more powerful than this, which is typically the N595, which you can also find in the X1. If you go ahead and look at the Geekbench score, those will average about 450 to about 513 in terms of a single core processor on Geekbench. The Raspberry Pi 5 and Orange Pi 5, uh, that will range anywhere around maybe 850, 870 in terms of Geekbench. This would probably range somewhere around the low 400s, maybe high 300s and so forth, something like that nature. However, in terms of an emulation standpoint, this will run, as far as an emulation standpoint, will run all of your basic emulators and games ranging from, let's say, your Atari set all the way up to PlayStation 2 without any hitches. I kid you not. This is the chip that you guys want to get. This is the one that you need to jump on. I ordered one of these earlier today from a website called uh, Ariace, or Ariace, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, you can get the heat sink and fan for only $6. I went ahead and opted for the eight gigabyte version. Shipping was only $12, and this will be here in the next few days. But this is a killer. And one of the things I've noticed even in the home arcade community and retro gaming, a lot of people still don't understand a lot of this stuff. We're still running into bottlenecks. We're still running into uh, issues where people are still trying to tinker and tinker and tinker for two or three years on a single board computer. And you're not gonna see any performance differences because a lot of this stuff is not fully optimized for ARM. And based upon this price, again, this was $162 two years ago for a mini PC for this particular chipset. Now you can get it as low as 32, between 32 and $39. Uh, right now, if you wanna get the four gigabyte version, it's $49, which is a lot less uh, compared to your Raspberry Pi 4s uh, within the four of a gigabyte and the eight gigabyte variant. Uh, this is a killer. I kid you guys not. This is one of the ones that you definitely want to jump on. This is the one that you definitely want to have in your collection, along with maybe some of the other ones. But uh, I had to jump on this, had to make a video about it because this will run the majority of your PlayStation 2 games perfectly fine without any hiccups, without any flaws. This will run your, in, in, in your entire N64 set perfectly fine as emulation should. This will run your Killer Instinct, your NFL Blitz, and all, Car and Evils, all of those games that you guys have been struggling with on an ARM-based, let's say, Pi 3, Pi 4. Uh, even the Raspberry Pi 5 and Orange Pi 5 still has issues with a lot of those same ROM sets, even right now on the Raspberry Pi 5, running it through RetroPie. We're still having issues with NFL Blitz and sounds, and Killer Instinct still has some issues with sounds and whatnot. No, that's ARM. 
this is x86 you guys won't have an issue with that and of course you can still do some other cloud gaming and some of the other base things but i mentioned that because those are typically the one things that we still have issues with on a lot of single board computer even though that they are pushing out so much more power uh, the orange pi 5 and raspberry pi 5 is probably about three to four times more powerful than this but it's more effective in terms of emulation and giving you guys the accuracy which, uh, as far as what you want from an emulation standpoint uh, uh, in that basis. It will emulate pretty much everything that you need, again, all the way from Atari, your NESs, your ZX Spectrums, uh, N64 shouldn't have an issue, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast, it'll do all of this. Uh, this one comes with an RTC battery set. It also has an M.2 slot. You get two USB 2.0s, an M.2 key connector, 40 pin GIO header. Uh, this one has uh, this particular one here. Again, we went over the RAM specifications. It has LP DDR4 RAM, Intel Celeron J4 125, headphone jack with a mic, 4K HDMI. Uh, and the M.2 is on the bottom. So the only difference is you have to buy the case for which is $6, which is really not a deal breaker whatsoever. Now the base frequency of this chip is two gigahertz. Now you guys are usually used to uh, overclocking your chips. So the base frequency is two gigahertz, but it has a boost limit of 2.7 gigahertz, which means if you were using this, let's say we're using emulation, for example, if you were using PlayStation 2 and it needed that additional power, it's gonna automatically boost up to 2.7 if it needs it. If it doesn't need it, if it's idle, it automatically goes back down to two gigahertz. Uh, we typically don't get that kind of performance. You will get something similar to that if you're using the big little architecture uh, that is uh, very similar with the RK3588 uh, chip series however if you have like a raspberry pi 5 raspberry pi 4 which is broadcom you're overclocking to about 2.2 2.4 gigahertz all the way up to three and it's at that speed pulling down that much power even if it's not uh, being used this allocates the power and it will boost up the frequency of the single board computer for you while you're using it which is a huge plus so Again, don't look at the two gigahertz, look at the 2.7 gigahertz factor, has four cores, four threads, Intel UHD graphics 600. Uh, again, it has all the video specifications that we went over. Um, this does not have EMC storage, which isn't a deal breaker. It has two HDMI displays supporting 4K 30 frames uh, per second resolution. Again, not a killer. So for those of you who are in the home arcade community, what does this mean for you? If you are, if you have a let's say uh, a countercade or something small, or even if you have a big arcade set, you don't wanna break the bank. You're looking for something Raspberry Pi-esque within that $30, $40 range. This is the king of the hill for you. You guys know I love my UE2 X1 single board computer. That is a stronger chipset. That one starts out about $100, $109. But if you're looking for the perfect and the best single board computer in terms of an emulation standpoint that'll do everything that you need up to PlayStation 2 for this price range. There is no other single board computer on the market that I can think of that can do it. Yes, I'm sure there's some ARM single board computers out there that will try to say that they're compared uh, compared to this, but this was uh, pretty much the same price as the Atomic Pi and you're getting three to four times more power. Now that Atomic Pi was usually around $39, $39 to $44. It is an Intel based chip. I think it was the uh, Intel Atomic, uh, the Atomic chip. This would be the upgrade for it at pretty much the same price. Now the other thing is I do believe this comes with Windows 10. I'm not really certain for that. I'm about 90% certain that it does. But even if it does, keep this in mind. Most of you are looking at videos on YouTube and people are offering you CD keys or Windows keys for $30. So imagine you're only paying $9 for this single board computer. Um, I got a Windows CD key from a, a Windows PC that I bought and you could transfer that to another computer. You could do that if you want to and also sign up for the uh, Windows Insider program. And I do believe they give you a free CD key with that. So typically a Windows key will cost you about $100 for an official license. I know you could get them for $30, but with this, if you could do that, you're not breaking the bank. So really you're getting all of that really included for $9. 
this is a no-brainer guys if you're in the home arcade community you're looking for the best single board computer that's going to run everything flawlessly all the way up to ps2 and this might 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 run some low-end ps3 games uh let's say your ninja turtles i think uh this is called rain man or something like that it's a small 2d game it might run that it may be a few hiccups or whatnot i haven't seen a performance on it. it might run that uh this should also run not just ps2 but of course also run some of the other basic pc games but again wanted to show you guys this particular chip i've already invested my time in it I paid like 80 dollars earlier today uh that's because i went with the uh 8 gigabyte version just to make sure i have that additional headroom but you guys will not be disappointed with this based upon schematics i haven't actually bought a right access chip before we don't actually have it but based upon these specs based upon this intel chip and you guys could actually find this uh previous videos of this chip uh all throughout online but to find it in this form factor for this price range it is a no-brainer so uh with that being said make sure you guys like and subscribe i will give you some emulation videos uh, as soon as this comes in the mail i'm not sure exactly uh when it's coming in but if i had had this and had the knowledge that i could apply it maybe several years ago uh, i probably would have skipped out on a raspberry pi 3b plus and so forth but uh this is the killer and you know i've been saying it earlier today in my post it seems that uh intel smells blood in the water it seems like they're putting the squeeze on a lot of these arm chips as you guys know a lot of these arm chips now are 127 dollars and you know they all have you know its own performance values especially if you run android you're going to get your money's worth for the most part but these chips for intel used to cost 300 to 500 dollars just a couple of years ago so the market has really changed and from an emulation standpoint i know we tinker a lot and say well development to get there eventually with the orange pi 5 and the raspberry pi 5 and the raspberry pi 4 but again we're still waiting on development for a lot of these things and when you're using the gaming front end uh they still have its own particular bottlenecks that haven't really been addressed yet so you don't have to worry about any of this uh, as soon as you can get a front end, uh, this will run your coin ox, your uh, retro bats and everything, as well as a lot of the other systems and front ends. No problem for only $39.99. And uh, earlier today, there was another website that had this for like $32. But I think they sold out uh, really quickly. So again, guys, thank you guys for watching. I will catch you guys later. Make sure you like and subscribe. Peace out and have a great day. Bye-bye.